do that right where you are. I need you to get your Bible, get your scripture, get your, get your iPad, get your iPhone, get your computer out right where you are. And I need you to sit in expectation for the spokeswoman of glory today. Won't you put your hands together right where you are and all over this place for Pastor Tanisha Walton. Come on. Hey, praise God family. We want to just bless God even for everyone who is here. It's about 10 of us here. Won't you guys say amen, amen. here? The faithful few have come out and braved the sickness in Jesus' name. I also want to thank God for our musicians who are here. We love you. Thank you so much, Calvin, Fred, LJ. Thank you. And our praise team, as you've seen, they came out. We love you so much. Thank you for being here. Hey, if you are watching at home and, uh, or online or maybe you're at a coffee shop and you have a prayer request for someone, uh, can you put that in the comments if you want to pray for someone who is sick or who's in need? Why don't you add that to the comments and just, um, just chat it up in the comments. Say that you're here. Say amen. Say you're checking in. Um, we are social distancing, but our hearts are not far apart. For, amen. Amen. I do believe God has a word for us, and I think it's just going to be family style, right? So let's just do family style. We're going to act like we're at home. If you're at home, just pull up a cover, get your favorite blanket, get you some coffee, some tea. Why don't you cuddle up beside your favorite fire? Maybe you made a fire at home. I don't know what you're doing. But why don't you just go ahead? We here. We're just gonna get com we're just gonna get comfortable. Why don't you get your Bibles out? We're actually gonna walk through a Bible verse, and I think it's gonna be um, really a great. We're gonna go to Mark five, Mark chapter five, and we're just gonna walk through some verses. Is that okay? We're not gonna do some. Y'all don't. I'm not. Ah, I'm not gonna do that on the day. Amen. <laughs> we could. We could shout all by ourselves in here, man. We could have a whole time in here. But we're just going to walk through this Bible verse. And I think that it's very relevant. I love the way the word of God is relevant, was written thousands of years ago, but it's rele relevant to our everyday lives. So if you're at home, come on, lock in with us. I want you to be in expectation of what God's going to do in your heart and in your mind through this simple word. Amen. We're talking today. Um, our subject today is we belong to each other. We belong to each other. Can you guys say that? Say we belong to each other. We belong to each other. We are currently at the way in our belong groups. Hey, if you're in the belong group, can you say yeah, yeah? yeah. Let me hear you online. Are you on a belong group? Wave your hand. Belong groups are going great. It is our attempt as a church to not just see each other and say hi and know people by faces, but really get into our lives and know that you have a place that you belong, where you are seen, where you are loved. So we have belong groups going. And this is such a great time in this culture that we're in right now to know that we belong to each other. Amen. Mark 5. We're going to just read sections at a time and just kind of dive in. It says... Um, they came there, they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gesserines. You guys know what that is. And when Jesus had stepped out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Hmm. He lived among the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain, for he had often been bound with shackles and chains, but he wrenched the chains apart and broke the shackles in pieces. No one had strength to subdue him. Day and night among the tombs and on the mountainsides, he was always crying out, and cutting himself with stones. My God, what a predicament. Even if we, we open this scene with Jesus arriving here, but if you go back a chapter, chapter 4, 
That was when Jesus had calmed the sea. And before he calmed the sea, he told his disciples, hey, let's go over to the other side. In my opinion, I think he had this man in mind the whole time. He said for no good reason, hey, let's just go over to the other side. Knowing what he would meet there, he would meet a man who had been quarantined. <laughs> we know a little bit about something about that right now, right? What we're going through right now in our present day. Y'all can help me. All right. Oh, there it is. Praise God. We know about quarantine a little more than we did two weeks ago. What it means to be isolated. This is a man who was quarantined all left all by itself. He was a tortured soul with nowhere to belong. My God. Now, if, the, if our topic today is that we belong to each other, I want to look at this as lessons of how you don't belong with each other. Let's look at the people of the village. Let's see how, how not to belong to each other. We have this man. He has some mental health issues, it looks like. He has some things going on in his heart and his mind and they othered him. We've been talking about othered here. You know, when you make other people, like those are those people, or that's the person with mental health issues, or that's the person over there, oh, we don't. They othered him. They failed to see his humanity. And I want us to really be on guard for this, because we could do this really easy as we're driving down the street and people are asking for money, yeah. as we see our houseless brothers and sisters, it's easy for us to lose track of the humanity in people. This man was still a man, but somehow they lost humanity. This is what the people of the village did. They was like, you know what? We can't control you anymore. Instead of trying to help him, they tried to control him. They put shackles on him. They put chains on him. He did the opposite of every worship song when we want Jesus to break every chain. He broke every chain that they tried to put on him. He didn't, he, he had no, no time for it. So God is, look, look what God is trying to show us in this. He, sometimes in our lives, the things we can't understand, we try to control. They tried to control him. They tried to put shackles on him. How do you react to things you don't understand? How are you reacting, online family, to the things you can't control right now? We have a lot of things. This is not our norm. And if you look out in our audience, we usually have about 150 people in here rocking and worshiping. But how do we react on things you can't control? How have you been handling this pandemic? The things that you don't understand and the things that you can't control. How are you reacting? Come on, sit with that for a minute. Look at what they did to this man. He was out living among dead things. He was just out on the isolated all alone. And if we're not, if we're not careful with the social distancing, I can see this being as the future as what we don't have any contact with anyone anymore. And we're just kind of living in these bubbles. Look at verse 5. It says, day and night among the tombs on the mountain. He was always crying out and cutting himself with stones. Isn't that sad? Let's think about this man's life. He's isolated, he's lonely, and he's hurting himself. That sounds like a lot of our lives sometimes when we get too isolated, we get in our heads, we're dealing with some mental illness, we try to turn inwardly, and look at the, pl the plight of this man. He's crying out. Look how sad. Do you know people in your life who is crying out for help? They might look like, I don't know any teachers out there. I know you get a break for a little bit. But you have that one kid who's always crying out for help, but it comes out as acting up or won't sit down or won't listen. Always, are we othering these people in our lives? The people we can't control or understand? Do you put them in a category like, oh, no, they just got to sit out with the tombs. Like, uh-uh, you dead to me. You got to go over there. This is what they did to this man. He did not have a place to belong. He was put out, and all he did was cry out and hurt himself. This is why we need to belong to each other. Aren't you glad someone loved you at your worst? Yes. You, you remember, 
We haven't always arrived to the place that we are today. It took a lot of time sometimes for us to come to a, a mindset that God is working on us continually. But aren't you grateful for the person who loved you in spite of, that didn't cast you out to the tombs, that didn't leave you to yourself? Come on, that's what we are to be to one another. This is why we need to belong to one another. Okay, let's pick up on the story. We're in verse six, are you there? Online family, are you there? Look at verse six, Mark chapter five, verse six. And when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and fell down before him. And crying out with a loud voice, he said, what have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. For he was saying to him, come out of the, of the man, you unclean spirit. I love that Jesus didn't have no time for it. All he was like, hey, just, just come on out. Come on out. Hey, come on out. Jesus was just saying something. You know, he didn't even do a whole lot like we do. Like, oh, in the name of Jesus. He didn't even do all that. He was like, hey, come on. Uh, you, got to, you got to roll. But I love that in verse 6, when he saw Jesus from afar. Look at this. This was a man they said didn't have a right mind. But he recognized something. Do you know that people can recognize Jesus in your life? And they'll see it from afar. They'll be like, it's something, mm, 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 mm. You're not acting like everybody else around here. He saw something from afar. He saw Jesus from afar. And I love that. He ran to him, pursued after him, and he fell at his feet. And I love this because, you know, everything must bow down to the name of Jesus. Every sickness, every disease. Do y'all believe that out there? That everything must bow to the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Do you believe that in here? This man bowed down before him. Whenever you have an encounter with Jesus, it causes you to go low. It causes us, you know, a lot of us were very cynical about this whole thing that was coming up with all the sickness and things. But now we've had to humble ourselves and be like, okay, well, this must really be a thing. Mm -hmm. Right? We have to, everything, even the coronavirus is going to bow down to the name of Jesus. Do y'all understand that there's nothing bigger than the name of Jesus? I'm just wondering if we got the saints on the same page of who we serve. And I love when Jesus said, hey, come out the man. Notice he wasn't talking to the man. He was talking to the spirit. He said, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. You notice that? He didn't say, no, you no good, low down, good for nothing. He didn't even, he wasn't even dealing with the man, his humanity. He talked to the spirit. How many how many conversations and arguments have you been in with people lately? And you talking to the man. You talking to their person. You're insulting them as a person. And look, Jesus didn't do that. He talked to the spirit. And I just want you to know that there is a spirit behind every action. Do you know that? That's why he talked to the spirit. Look at what we've been looking at lately. Look in the news or have you gone to the store lately? Did y'all try to go to the store? I gave up. I didn't go. I ain't going to the store. Ain't no toilet tissue. Lord, is it? We don't. Did y'all, online family, did y'all try to go to the store? Did you get your tissue? We need to get a, run a tissue operation out here. But notice the spirit of mass panic. You know that that spirit, that survival of the fittest spirit, that scarcity narrative spirit, you know that that spirit always comes with the action, right? So if Jesus was here, he wouldn't speak necessarily to the people, but to the spirit behind it. The spirit behind it is selfishness. The spirit behind it is fear, is hoarding. I have to have enough for me and mine kind of the American way, right? It's really, it's really a, it's a great observation of how, man, I mean, this is, this 
pandemic is serious, but the mortality rates are pretty, you know, survivable. Can you imagine if we really had like a, a real, real, like this is real. I'm trying to tell you, this is a very telling for us to see the spirit behind the action. What are people scared of? Think about it. They're scared of dying, scared of fear, scared of not having enough. There's a spirit behind every action. So let me just remind you that we have to let that mind be in us, which is also in Christ Jesus. What is the spirit behind your actions? See, when we can't look or be like the world, we, our reaction can't be the same as everyone else out in the streets, everybody else in the news. That can't be our story because we have a source. We have a hope. We have, who we, we, we have no scarcity narrative in the kingdom, amen? We have a heavenly father who takes care of us. So let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ. Jesus said, I give you my peace. This is the peace I give you. Peace not that the world gives, that the peace I give you. Jesus wants to speak to the spirit behind your actions. So he talked to this man. He didn't he talk to, he talked to the spirit to this man. And he said um, in verse 9, Jesus asked him, this is a very important question. Of all the things he could have asked him, he said, what is your name? He asked the man, he's talking to the man now, what, what's your name? The man replied, my name is Legion, for we are many. Poor little troubled soul, he had a lot going on. He asked him what his name, it looked like the man didn't give him his name, but he gave him his condition. He gave him his condition, and we do that a lot also. How you doing? Well, you know, my knees and my, oh, my back. And you know, my arthritis acting up a little bit today, but I got a little cold, little bag on. Other than that, I'm doing good. How you doing? Right? Somebody was, he wanted to know what his name is. The man gave him his condition. That's not what Jesus asked. He asked, what is your name? And it's interesting that he said legion, right? And if you look it up, you know, a legion is a unit of 3,000 to 6,000 men in the ancient Roman army. So he was like, hey, we rolling deep up in here. It's not just me. It's a lot of people out here with me. And you know, we can feel like that, this legion spirit, because we're facing a lot right now, amen, with this, with this epidemic that is going on. We keep hearing news reports and, and numbers, and it feels like a lot. Sometimes it feels like we are facing legion, right? Do you feel like that, online family? Do you feel like you're facing a lot? A lot is happening. A lot is coming at you at one time. That we are facing limit. But I love that he said... What is your name? I'm asking you, child of God, what is your name? People in here, what is your name? Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? They're not what condition you're in right now. Even if you're sick right now and you're not feeling the best, I'm still asking you, who are you? You are a child of God. You are a child of God. You have been purchased by the Most High. The Lord of heaven and earth is your maker. Do you know who you are? Do you know who you're dealing with? Do you know you're not just out here orphaned? It's different for the child of God. Someone who doesn't know God, that they don't have a clue. They're like, I don't know who I am. I got these identity issues. But I'm trying to tell you today, who are you? Do you understand who holds you? Do you understand the Lord is your light and your salvation, that you don't have to fear, that you don't have to be afraid? Do you know this child of God? Who are you? There should be something different about the people of God, even in this time, even in this pandemic, even in this crisis. There should be a lightness in our step. There should be a gleam in our eye. They should, this is, we should be able to look out and be like, yeah, things look pretty bad, but... I serve the one true living God. I put my hope in the most high. 
Jesus is still on the throne. And he has never left us, and he will never forsake us. Hallelujah. Amen. We serve. We, we something different about us. Yeah. Something different about you, online family? Something different about you? All right. Let's go to verse 10. We just walking through. Y'all all right? Y'all mind just walking through the Bible? Amen. Some of y'all, y'all better read the Bible at home while you're at home, on, working from home. Yeah. Work that in your schedule. All right, verse 10. He said he begged him earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now, a great herd of pigs was feeding on the hillside, and they begged him, saying, send us to the pigs and let us enter them. Very interesting, verse 13. So he gave them permission. And the unclean spirit came out and entered the pigs. And the herd, numbering about 2,000, rushed down the steep bank into the sea and drowned in the sea. Very interesting paragraph of scripture, but I just want to remind you one more time that everything submits to Jesus. I just want you to know that everything, can I get an amen, online family? Everything submits to Jesus. And also, there's a lot of things that Jesus permits that we might not understand. Can you wrap your head around that? Jesus could have been like, you know what? No, you got to roll. No. He, he, permitted, he permitted something that we might not even understand. And I just want us to park right here. These are times of crisis, and they reveal a lot. And Lord, the Lord lets us go through times of crisis sometimes. He permits things, amen, because it reveals a lot. It reveals a lot. We're going to see what it revealed at the, the people in this village. But just look at your life. There's a verse in Hebrews that says, everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Can you, do you know that? Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And doesn't it feel like things have been shaken in your life? All these closures. We've never seen anything. You know, if you're kind of like older, like some of us in here, if you're over 40, you seen, you seen, we seen a lot. We've been through year 2000. We've been through Ebola. We've been through 9-11. We've been through swine flu. We've been, we've seen a lot of things. But we could all probably attest that we haven't seen to this magnitude where it feels like a movie almost, right? Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Your jobs, events. I was coaching for a team. We were going to state championships canceled yes, everything that can be shaken so guess what if you're not really solid on who you are and your identity if your identity is in your jobs or the things that you do everything that can be shaken will be shaken in your life who are you apart from these things who are you apart from everything that's closing down who are you apart from your job who are you apart from the way you make money who are you Apart from your entertainment, who are you? Everything that can be shaken will be shaken in your life. Do you hear me? A lot of times we get shaken to be awakened. Shaken to be awakened. And there's some times when our life is just going so comfortable and so status quo and so dependable. The things I thought, the things that were canceled this week are dependable. There's never not been a state championship. What? That's dependable. That's every year we have a champion. But what do you do when your life is shaken from his, from his comfortability? Can you still pursue God, online family, if there's no church building open? Is this your only source of spirituality? Is this the only place that you get life? Perhaps the Lord wants to shake and permit some things so that you can see how much you really need and depend on him and how much we need to really pursue him on our own. Amen? Will you survive to this survival of the fittest mentality? And how will you react when you face the fear of death? Let's sit with that for a minute. Because this is what causes the panic, the fear of death. For the person who does not know God does fear death.
But we, the people of God who believe in resurrection, have a different mentality. We have a come what may mentality. God is in control and he's good and he's all merciful, he's all powerful and I trust in him, come with may, sickness or health. If I die, I'm gonna be with the Lord. I mean, that's just, there's no, death has no hold on us so therefore we can operate in a different joy, a different hope. And we don't have to hoard everything. This is why we have to believe that we belong to each other. We can't subscribe to the world's way of surviving. The way we survive is together. So next time you go to the grocery store when they restock, why don't you get something for somebody else? I'm gonna pick up some tissue for me and for my neighbor. I'm gonna pick up this hand sanitizer for me and for my coworkers. Come on, we belong to one another. Come on, if you're in a belong group, why don't you contact your belong group? Ask people what they need. Let's think about the elderly people who are in our congregation and are in our neighborhood. Let's say, hey, how are you doing? You need some groceries? I feel so bad for all the little young, able-bodied people who snatched up all the good items. And then here comes a little lady with a, with a basket, could hardly get to, the, to any of the items. We didn't even think about the, the older people among us. Come on, we belong to each other. Come on, say it, we belong to each other. Say it at home. Say, we belong to each other. And not just this community, but also where you live, where you work, your family. Did you check on your family? Are you checking on, come on, we belong to each other. And we belong to an unshakable kingdom. It, that verse says that everything that can be shaken will be shaken, but we, <laughs> we belong to an unshakable kingdom. Do you believe that? When you're in the kingdom of God, even though the earth gives way, we can't be shaken. We serve a God who is on the throne. Amen. All right, we're going to wrap this up. Let's go to verse 14. We just walking through Mark 5. And when you get to your belong groups this week, you'll also be talking about Mark 5. So it's going to be a full circle moment. Verse 14. Let's see the reaction. The herdsmen fled and told it in the city and in the country. And people came to see what it was that had happened. See, what had happened was. And they came to Jesus and saw the demon-possessed man, the one who had the legion, sitting there clothed in his right mind. And they were afraid. Interesting reaction. And those who had seen it described to them what had happened. See, I told you, that's in the Bible. What had happened was. That what had happened to the demon-possessed man and to the pigs. And they began to beg Jesus to depart from their region. Sips tea. What? Let's talk about the two reactions. First of all, they saw the man... They still wasn't calling him, but I feel disrespectful for him. They still didn't call him. They said, and that man who was called Legion, he had a name. But anyway, they saw him sitting in his right mind, and they were afraid. Interesting. They weren't happy. They weren't like, oh, we not. They were afraid. And then once they realized what happened, they was like, oh, no, Jesus, you got to go. You got to roll up on out of here. Nope, leave instantly. Isn't that something? Cause I kind of want to talk about here how um, we kind of promote capitalism over wellness a little bit. Sometimes we're not happy for people's recovery or wellness because there's money at stake. Do you see how even the san hand sanitizers, they increased in price. A product that we need goes up over wellness. It seems like in our country, we live in a free, the, supposedly the greatest free nation in the world, and things that are, the, should be accessible cost things. They're, now they're trying to say like internet should be not a luxury, or Wi-Fi should not be a luxury, it should be something that's for all people. 
right? Capitalism over wellness. People are capitalizing over fear and panic. Amen? So that's why we can't be one of the people who are living in that. The people will capitalize on your fear. The people were, they were afraid when they saw this man clothed and in his right mind. Interesting reaction. Are we afraid sometimes of what, what, what should be? Sometimes we're afraid like, oh, I'm supposed to be sick. Oh, you not sick? Oh, I don't know why you not sick. Sometimes we get afraid of things that should be good. Come on. We're supposed to be healthy. We're supposed to be well. And if somebody's not, we're surprised and afraid. Like, oh, I'm not going to drink that. We knocking on wood. Let's not, let's not be like that. When God does something amazing, when God keeps us, and when that we don't have to go with the, the status quo. Sometimes we're happy with the status quo at the expense of someone who's suffering. Look at the people who, the, the pigs, you know why they wanted Jesus to leave? He costed them some money. Them pigs was their livelihood. They had 2000 They like, we got a good gig here. We got guaranteed money. People want this bacon. Not the Jewish people necessarily, but we're going to sell to these Gentiles. Poor child. They had a whole it, a dynasty set up. Pigs are us. And there it goes down the hill. Jesus, you got to go. Because when we start coming together as a community and we start helping one another, and we stop giving into this capitalism, and we're working together, it disrupts the status quo. Remember back in our you know, civil rights, the, all the people who started not taking the bus, it costing people getting into the pocketbooks of the folk? They were like, oh no, y'all got to go. Jesus disrupts the status quo. He disrupts the status quo. They didn't want him in there because he messes with the money. Let's not be a people who love money so much that we can't belong to one another. That they should have been so happy, the little man sitting in his little right mind. Look at him. They weren't even happy for him. They would rather for him to be off on the side and they just going on with their regular life. Let that not be us, saints. We can't be happy if all of us aren't happy. If one of us is suffering, then we all suffering. If one of us is not right, we all not right until we get it right. That's got to be our culture here. Amen, online family. That's got to be our culture here. That has to be our culture in our belong groups. That's why we're going to really be tapping into our prayer lines. I want you to please email us if you have any needs, anything that you need. We want to be able to provide for our, our church family. Amen? Amen? There should be no one should have lack among us. Amen, amen. This is the last scripture, and we are out of here. Verse 18. So Jesus was like, hey, did my thing as he was getting on the boat. Remember, he just came just for this. He just got off the boat. Do y'all remember that? Let's go over to the other side. Went through a storm, got there, healed the man. All right, I'm done. Got back on the boat. Could it be that Jesus comes just for you? He comes just for you. He'll go through a storm for you. If you were the only one, he would have died just for you. Do you know that? He came just for him. He was getting back on the boat. All right, I did my job. The man who had been possessed with demons begged him that he might be with him. He wanted to go with Jesus. He's like, oh, no, don't leave me with these people. They locked me up. Oh, no good people. What kind of community is this? He's like, Jesus, take me with you, Jesus. But remember, Jesus permitted the pigs, but look at verse 19. But he did not permit him. Hmm. He didn't permit him. But he said, go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you. And now he has had mercy 
on you. Isn't that beautiful? He's like, no, 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 don't go home. You know, don't come with me. I got 12 people already. I'll be good. But I need you to do is go home. Tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. And he went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him and everyone marveled. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? So this is very important. What have you been talking about the most over the last two weeks? Have you been talking more about Jesus or Corona? What has captured your thoughts? What has captured your timeline? What has captured your imagination? What are you proclaiming? What is your story? What will your testimony be through this crisis? Will you be the one who's panicking like, oh, no, I'm going to get it, Lord. I know I feel something in my throat. Oh, Jesus. Like, or are you the one who's going to be steadfast and you're going to proclaim who Jesus is? You're going to continue to tell people, oh, no, God is good. Oh, he's had mercy on me. He's doing great things. I know it looks crazy around here, but God is still doing great things. He's still good. He's still kind. He's still loving. Come on, what, are, what will you be proclaiming throughout this, this rest of this pan? Because this will tell the story. This is how Jesus is going to shine through us. This is our moment. Do you know that? This is our moment, online family. This is our moment as a church. This is our moment as a people to allow the presence of God to stand up in us. To come what may, come what may, we're going to worship God. We're going to give him all the glory. We're going to give him all the praise. We are going to help people. We're going to not have that, that scarcity mentality, but we are going to be a light. Come on, we got three questions I want you to think about. And then we're going to go home. We have our praise team come up, and we're just going to sing a little something. It says, how can you resist a scarcity narrative and create a belonging narrative in your life? Come on, think about that. Think about that online family. Instead of, we're not going to have enough, I need 800 rolls of toilet paper this week. <laughs> Instead of that, how can we cultivate a belonging narrative? Who can you include into your circle, into your concern? And to who can you make a hygiene kit for and just drop it off along the streets? Come on, let's start thinking about us, we. Um, how do you react to things you cannot control or change? From what I hear, you know, things could, you know, take a more downward turn before they get better. That's what they're projecting. So how will you react to that? Is your life, do you believe the American narrative that your life is supposed to be comfor comfortable at all times? Room temperature at all times? You're not supposed to have any ups and downs because you believe in Jesus. You're not supposed to go through any sickness or pain because we buy into that Western culture and it's just not real life. You know, this is why we have God in our life. This is why we are Christians. We were made for adversity. This is why we say yes to God. Because life is hard, and he's the one that's going to get us through it. So our life might not be comfortable for a minute. Are you going to be okay with that? Will you still have joy? Can you still operate in peace? Can you still have a source of hope? Even when things get a little, might look a little crazy, might look like a little movie for a little bit. But how will you react? Can't control any of this. But we know the one who can, right? Last question. What are you proclaiming during this season? What is your testimony? What will you be known for saying every time you go to work? Oh, how you doing, Sheila? You okay? Girl, God is good. I'm, I'm just fine. God is in control. I'm so blessed. I know, you know what? I did have a little cough, but God's going to get me through it. Hallelujah. He is in control. Come on, let that be our narrative, people of God. Online family, let that be our narrative. This is who we are. We were made for this moment. 
We were made to stand up and we were made to belong to each other. Made to belong to each other. Can you text somebody that right now or can you give somebody, if you're here, just do a virtual wave, tell somebody we belong to each other. Come on, praise team, and we could come on out and just sing the everlasting God again. That was, that was a great, the Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? Do you believe that? The Lord is my light. That means we're not in darkness. He is my light and my salvation. Whom or what shall I fear? I'm not scared of Corona. I'm not scared of it. Because the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? God did not give us a spirit of fear. There are 365 instances in the Bible where God continually tells us, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. He never promised that it would be easy, saints. But one thing he promised, that he would be with us. He's with us. Come on, can you raise your hand and let's just begin to worship on that. He's with us. Even if you're sick right now, he's with you. Even if you're not feeling the best and maybe you got some situations, your job is closing down, you don't know what you're going to do with your kids, you got some gigs lined up and then things are just getting canceled left and right, can you just begin to worship and, be, and begin to know that he's with you? Say, so I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Things in this life will be hard. He said it. In this life, you will have trouble. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. That's what Jesus said. In this life, you will have trouble. But be of good, look it, be of good cheer. Come on, tell somebody, be of good cheer. Just tell them, be of good cheer. Point to them, don't shake the hand. Be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. That's our test form. Be a good cheer. He has overcome the world. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just sing this. Come on, just begin to sing it. If you're at home, just sing it to yourself. Come on, sing it out loud. There's one, one thing that remains the same. It's our God, and that's who we set our hope on. If you're watching at home, if you have a prayer request, can you go ahead and put that in the comments so we can pray for you? We will have a time of prayer here on Tuesday. Um, maybe we could be able to live stream it so you can come in and join us. We're going to be setting up a prayer line. So just keep your eyes open for that. So we know that in this time and in this season, we have to pray, saints. We have to stay before the throne. And how many believe God's going to do great things? He's going to bring us out. He's going to keep us. God is a keeper. He is a keeper, and he is able to keep us and sustain us. Let's continue to pray for our pastor and his wife. Um, he's not feeling the best right now, so we're just going to pray healing over his body. And that God will continue to bless him and strengthen him. Family, don't forget, belong groups are still on this week. Contact your belong group. Go to our website. You can join a, a belong group. They are amazing. Come on, be a part of this community. Be loved, be seen, because we belong to one another. Amen. Amen. Let's just close in prayer. God, we love you. 
thank you for this time of worship. God, even thank you for the technology, Lord, that we can still have church together, even though we're not physically together. But we believe that you are the God that mends our hearts. We feel your presence, and we know that wherever we are, your spirit is, and that's where church is. So we thank you for the way. Continue to bless us. Keep us healthy. Lord, continue to let us be lights in this dark place. Use us to belong to one another and bring us back once again next week. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Next week, same thing. Next week, next week, Pastor T, 10 a.m. All right? 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Next week, we'll be right back here. All right? All right. We are going to uh, uh, observe that for this, the coming month. All right? Yep. 10 a.m. right here at the way. All right. Love God you, way family. God bless you. God bless you. We love Bye, you. Bye, my family. We love Say you. Bye -bye. We miss you. We love you.